Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? Welcome back to the podcast. I believe this is episode 9, yeah. So we're about to talk about the scars and how they're created. Now I'm going to separate this into four different parts of how they're created. Um, their land and also their beef between Fedra and also the wolves. You guys ready for this? Let's just dive right into it, shall we? Alright, so we already know that they're religious cults and, well, they're crazy as hell. Uh, it was founded in 2010 and their headquarters are in Haven. Yeah, Haven, that's a wild right? We'll get into that soon. Okay, so the Seraphites begin in the lower Queen and suburb of Seattle between September 2013 and March 2014. It was here a woman supposedly had a vision from which she became inspired to live an engaleration life and strive for humanity to live off the land again, detach from mortal uh, pleasures and reliance on technology. So basically, their religious group was, we're not going to touch anything from the old world, especially we're not going to dabble in electron, electricity or technology, meaning it's kind of like the pilgrim times, I guess you could say. Yeah, seriously, it's like the 1800s for them. All right, so she was also a fierce fighter, able to defeat numerous infected that attack the community. Her charismatic uh, sermons preaching that the cordyceps brain infection was a punishment brought on humanities by their own sins and was a second chance for humanity to redeem itself inspired members in the community to do likewise uh, with the residents soon living independently uh, they fought off the infected and looser and grew foods on the land so i guess you could say it was a republic now let me tell you this um the woman she became a leader obviously of course the prophet they said um i keep on getting mixed up with mother miranda because i keep on thinking resident evil uh eight I'm sorry, but I guess I'll think about that. Her name is Laura Queen Anne. So I remember that. Okay, so Laura Queen Anne, um, in her metaphorically mind speaking, is that, well, she wants to distance herself and she wants to spread the word, meaning she thinks that the infected are a plague, a plague on humanity, meaning if you have sinned, basically you will be infected. Yeah. That's her word, and a lot of people believe that. And so she's able to gather a lot of resident members and to, I guess you could say, join her little sadistic, psychotic uh, group. Eventually, they grew uh, into militia fighters. Well, technically, militia fighters? I gotta say, yeah, they're kind of like the militia little group, um, a mixture with strategy and tech vice and also they had exceptions even love did say it to abby about some technology that they could use i mean when she said that she recruited some members like some of the residents what do you think who do you think created those like high structures up in the sky so that they could get past the wolves they had construction workers uh in the previous life before pre-outbreak basically yeah they had construction workers and some electricians and basically some people that could actually operate some technology. And it was okay for them as long as it was necessary. So those are some of the things that I suppose you could say uh, became um, more than a metaphor in life for her community. Now, I'm going to talk about their beef with Fedra. By 2014, federal military forces found the communities sometime after all other suburbs outside their protection have fallen to the infection. So the Seraphites live among the infected. They had different hideout places where they could bypass the infected, but if they find the infected, obviously, of course, they would kill the infected if it was in their way. The residents all praised the prophet for their survival despite the soldiers assessing that the community was low on food and at risk of dying from starvation. So they couldn't really plant their own foods at the moment because um, it was like hell was breaking loose. And obviously, of course, 
federal is getting territory ish. Well, I mean, territory ish. They're taking over a lot of areas and clearing out the infected, and they're able to find some of the Seraphites' hideouts. Yeah. So they can really grow food, and they did grow uh, quite a lot of food in a hotel. Yeah, believe it or not, it was in a hotel. It's crazy. Okay, so if we dive into this a little bit more, they're dying from starvation. So the military attempted to convince the group to relocate within the quarantine zones was for protection, but the group refused. Now, the reason why that uh, Vedra offered them a place to stay was because um, Vedra wanted to control everyone. So they said that if you come inside our Vedra, uh, our quarantine zone, our QZ, well, we will protect you. But no, no, no. Vedra's mind was that we're going to control these SOBs. We're going to control them because they're out of control. They're crazy what they're doing. They need not only protection, but we want to rule them all and gather them up all together and show them that there is only one leader, one leader and one renaissance, one republic only. It's not democratic at all. Okay, so <laughs> I'm getting off topic. Um, when they refuse, the instance was deemed a miracle by the residents in the zone and was one of the final stories to be officially published in the newspaper. So some of the residents inside the QZ zone saw that, wow, this whole group organization, they're actually standing the ground against FEDERA. They do not want to be part of FEDERA. So they got a little bit interested in Seraphites. They abandoned the QZ and they ended up joining the Seraphites. Eventually, the Seraphites had to learn the lesson and want to dispatch and to create uh, different organizations. Well, I mean, different organizations, meaning um, they want to separate certain people from the old worlds. Well, I mean, the old worlds, they want the people that know how to use like technology and stuff, separate them into a different group and separate the ones who don't know technology. They don't want the ones that don't know technology to learn it at all. They want them to be brainwashed. Okay, so uh, the conflict, uh, well, let me expand on the island, how they start off the island. Once the WLF defeated the military, I already told you how they defeated the military, the WLF, in the previous video. The Seraphites pushed into the city suburbs that were formerly under the military's protection and began to terrorize the people residing there. So they're able to flush out a lot of residents and uh, to take the ground as well. I guess you could say it was a resistance. The residents in fear moved from the suburbs and took up the WLS offer to join them and fight back against scars. Like I said before, some of the residents want to join Isaac's group, the WLS they kind of feared the scars because the scars were outlatched real crazy and so tensions flew and inside hillcrest that's when wlf decided yeah we're going to take over a lot of these city zones these streets they're going to be ours so the Seraphites thought that okay how about the woods area they stay out of the woods area how about we find like abandoned structures and live off there Eventually, they found small little islands that were near the coast of State Washington. When they found them, obviously, they had boats. They traveled in boats, and they just did it old school. Like, when they did old school, they built uh, their own temples, built uh, their own houses, and live off the land. And they said that, okay, well, I guess we grow, like, our crops and our food here, so we're safe here. But... Meanwhile, in like over on land, we'll still have our hideouts. We're going to still fight these WLS, but we're going to try to uh, regroup them. Well, I mean, regroup them. They're going to try to, uh, let's just say that, force them to join their cause. Yes, their cause is insanely crazy. So they inevitably did. They grew their food. They created families of their own elders. Eventually their laws, well, the rules got a little stricter because a lot of people questioned them and stuff. So they had to step in and uh, they avoided seizures a lot, obviously, of course. 
and they wanted to control half of the scars, the brainwashed ones, I guess you'd say. Now their conflict with the wolves was despite trying to live in peace, now they had a peace treaty multiple times, but people kept on breaking it. It was either on the WLS or the scars. It was like, once they collide together, they're itching to fight. They're itching to kill each other. And then their treaty broke. Okay, <clears throat> well, to better combat the WLF, the Seraphites formed their own army, hence a militia group. Containing around 500 soldiers, according to Yara. Yara did mention that too. Yeah, when she was talking to Abby. However, another account claims the Seraphites had an entire bridge brigade. Brigade is like a whole military group that's separate from a militia group and that is even more deadly and dangerous. Their army was compromised entirely of the eldest child from each family. Both men and women while Seraphites were taught how to fight protection while growing up. Soldiers had to be at least 16 years old. So I guess you'd say it's kind of like the military. Military wants to recruit um, young kids like that are like 17 to 18 years old, especially if they're 16 years old, if like their parents allow them to join the military and stuff. Well, that's kind of how uh, Seraphites were thinking in their minds. Now the WLF did set out some outposts uh, to control the Seraphites and they recognized their patrol patterns as well. So the Seraphites began to question their methods. How are they actually following us? So they they looked up in the air, they saw these buildings, they talked to their construction workers and asked them, can you actually build high structures so that we could get past the WLS? Cause it's annoying having to kill them. We have to send a message every time we run into them. I'm pretty sure you guys know what their message is every time they run into the WLF. Okay, now WL soldiers, uh, Jensen, Mishka and Beck rotated between the outposts. When on duty, Beck avoided drawing attention to himself, preferring to let the Seraphites wander into the affected occupied areas. So it was kind of a, a kill zone. They're tricking them. When on duty, Beck uh, avoided attention to himself and performing uh, to catch them off guard, the Seraphites. He enjoyed watching the Scars struggle to fight the infected. And advised Mishka do likewise when on snapping duty. So they just let them fact they kill them. That's it. Beck did face trouble when Seraphites, their own snappers. So, and Seraphites, this is where they got hold of their guns. They're like, you know what? Let's get some firepower. We need to fight back. We can't just use bows, axes, knives, and machetes. We need firepower. I mean, some don't know how to use guns in previous lives, so yeah. Every single WLF they killed in their transport that they destroyed, they took their ammunition, their supplies, their grenades, and their guns. And they also helped train even the young ones how to use the guns. Hence, Yara knows how to use a gun. I think Lev knows how to use a gun. I think. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, that's how they got their hands on guns. And when they got their hands on guns, that's when all hell broke loose now how the treaty actually separated was because a few of the seraphites kids actually wandered off into their territory the wlf um because the wlf was kind of spray painting on some of the seraphites hideouts and so what they did was the little kids they tried to attack in the wls but let's just say that their failed attack actually utterly destroyed them to their demise. Yeah, uh, they killed a few WLFs. Well, I wouldn't exactly say killed a few, they injured them badly. One of the WLFs shot one of the kids, one of the Seraphites. Yeah, in the chest, it was real sad. He had a Desert Eagle. He shot one of the kids in the chest and that kid bled out and he died right there on the spot. 
and the three other kids, they were trying to run away. And yet, uh, one of the other Seraphites that was laying on the ground that got hit with one of the arrows, well, let's just say that he brought out his M1911 and he shot them. He shot them in the back. The three kids are running away. And so they died. Yes. When the WLS, they survive with the arrow shot. Well, it was questionable death whether or not he did survive or not. Because some say that a WLF, some of his own men, actually killed him. Yeah, well, he was on death's door. He could have got help, but the WLS actually killed him. Because they want to make it seem like the scars drew first blood. So it was like weird. They didn't know what happened. They thought that was it the scars that drew first blood or was it the WLF? That was the true story of what actually happened between them. I know, crazy. Uh, then uh, what do you guys think about this? Are the scars crazier than WLFs? And that was like the whole plot tweezer at the end of how the truth broke. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys are new, subscribe to the channel. And yes, of course, I'll see you all in the next one.